Do you need to prepare for a data governance interview? Here are some questions that you can expect to be asked. And not only that, but I'll also show you how you could answer these questions. Oh, and I have to mention this. I've compiled this list of questions from my own experience and that of other data governance professionals, but also from the community of Glassdoor, LinkedIn, and Indeed.com, both on the hiring side as well as the interviewee side. Hi, I'm George, your helpful data guy. I post at least one video each week, so please subscribe to my channel. With each video, I'll try to address at least one of your questions and challenges when it comes to data governance, data quality, data management, and really in general, a bunch of other data topics. Today's video is covering data governance interview questions so that you can be better prepared for such an occasion. Please stay until the end as some of these questions might seem challenging, but I will teach you how you can deliver a great answer for each one of them. On to the first question, what is data governance? You might think this is a weird question, I mean, is it really common to interview for a data analyst role and be asked, what is data analytics? Or, you know, for that matter, interview for any position in HR, in IT, finance, marketing, and so on, and be asked, what is human resources? What is IT? What is finance? There are two reasons why you are asked this. One, there are a lot of misconceptions out there on what data governance is. So the interviewer wants to make sure that they are talking to someone that understands what data governance is and not what a vendor might use as a fancy word because that's what the hot topic is, I guess. Second, they want to test your communication skills and how well you can explain a topic to someone else because in data governance, you will need to explain quite a few things. So how do you answer what is data governance? It's always good to know more about your interviewers so that you know what type of language you can use, but I recommend keeping it at a high level and explain it to the interviewer as if they've never heard of it before. In fact, the interviewer will often specify, explain it to me as I've never heard of it before. I guess you can always go with the textbook definition and there are a few. Here's one of them. The exercise of authority, control, and sure decision-making, planning, monitoring, and enforcement over the management of data assets. Now, you usually get bonus points if you also mention the source, such as the DEMA, DMBOK, the data management book of knowledge in this case. But it's even better if you explain it in your own terms. And in case you need some help with it, I'll release a video about what data governance is and link to it over here. It will appear right here when that will be available. I also recommend providing an analogy to accompany your definition. I actually lead with that. I tend to use HR and finance to explain data governance as those areas are really understood across the business. And hey, please feel free to watch this video next if you want to see how I'm doing that. On to a similar vein, another question would be who or what group in an organization should be responsible for data governance? You know, I guess you can start with a more vague answer and just say, well, it depends. But then make sure that you mention that based on best industry practices, data governance should be the responsibility of the business side of the organization, not IT. I guess depending on the size of the organization, what level the maturity model the organization is at, they might already have a CDO office. So data governance usually falls under there, or maybe it's just one person team for the time being at least, and they could be reporting to the VP of finance, marketing, or sales, as an example. The next question might be a little bit more challenging, and that's because it's also asking, what do you expect the biggest challenge to be in data governance? This is where researching the organization really pays off, because understanding their products, their services, customer base, and the business landscape can give you an indication into what those challenges might be, into whatever challenges they might be facing. And this can differ depending on the industry, organization size, and if they're government or not, and so on. But in general, if they don't have a data governance program in place, you can expect a lack of ownership and accountability 
when it comes to data management. You can also expect a very silo approach when it comes to dealing with data quality issues, redundant systems and processes, and so much more. So you can then extrapolate what the biggest challenges would be. I think it's a safe bet to mention that the whole change management aspect of data governance won't be easy. Basically getting people on board to embrace this new data ownership and responsibility and have them come to the table to reach a common understanding and agreement and ultimately change the way they work. That's not going to be easy. It will happen. You'll make it happen. That's why they're hiring you. That's why you're going to nail this interview. Please like the video if you've enjoyed it so far and don't forget to subscribe. Very often I've also encountered this and the interviewer will say something of the sort. Can you please provide me with your quick assessment on a 30, 60, 90 day plan for this role? Okay, we're in the weeds now. I mean, this is a hefty question. There's a lot to say here. This is a video in its own right, which you can watch here, but it's split into three phases understand and assess. And that's basically a way for you to understand the entire information landscape and assess whatever those priorities might be, whatever those pain points you need to tackle first. The next phase is to establish. So that's where you're establishing that foundation for data governance and then improving. That's where you're applying data governance to a particular data set or a particular data domain or more. By the way, you won't be able to get a data governance program to a high maturity level in three months, but you can definitely lay part of that foundation for it. And I'm mentioning that because maybe the names of these three phases might be misleading, thinking that, hey, all the work will be done in three months. No, it won't. You can also be asked, can you give me a sample data governance roadmap similar to the previous one? So that's why usually it's kind of one or the other that you're being asked in the same interview. But just prepare for the unexpected. Be prepared for anything. Yeah, you can spend a lot of time answering this question. If you want some ideas, you can check out my articles on data governance maturity models or check out my online course on that same topic. That being said, let's try and answer this question by providing them with six main steps on this roadmap. The first is defining the data governance strategy and making sure that it addresses the business needs. It's key, it needs to tie back to the business goals and to the driver of why data governance is needed. Second, defining and rolling out those roles and responsibilities for data governance. And of course, the data governance operating model. Third, defining the metrics, KPIs, and how success will be measured, as well as how progress will be tracked. Fourth, outline policies and processes for data acquisition and creation, data maintenance, data dissemination, usage and data destruction. Fifth, select the right tools and secure the right resources. And the sixth step, just continuous improvement. This is something that will be ongoing. You'll just keep on cycling through it. Again, this is high level. And sometimes you might be asked to prepare a presentation that covers this question. If that's the case, you would have a bit more time to describe this in further detail. And I do recommend looking at the data governance maturity model, or at least one of them, or even refer to the 30, 60, 90 day plan video to create a more comprehensive answer. These are usually the most asked questions in a data governance interview. But please also watch the next video in this interview series, as I will go over the kinds of questions you will be asked so that the interviewer can better understand your previous data governance experience. Please like the video if you've enjoyed it so far and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, thank you.